so today we'll start SAT math skill number eight and that is related to math vocabulary right because there'll be so many questions and it should be and it should be having different vocabulary terms used so if you don't know one of them then you're gonna land in trouble because you'll not be able to understand what really you had to do in the question so so that's why we have to know all those vocab terms and it's telling you the skill is telling you anytime you see a math vocab term underline it so that you clearly are able to you know are having your your goal setting that this is the thing which I need to calculate and this is the way uh, which I wish which, which I should follow so you have to underline the math vocab term for example you're having for example sometimes you'll be having a real you know constant integer consecutive even odd prime units digit you know factors etc so these types of numbers these types of uh, names are simply math vocabs right and for example multiples positive negative so these are also math vocab terms which uh, we need to understand so that we'll be able to understand uh, how to do the question now um, let us see the first question um, in this part so it's telling you if, if the if, if two consecutive so first of all underline it right if two consecutive integers so these are two math vocab terms here consecutive means one after other for example two is after one right and three is after two right so like that two consecutive integers have a sum of nine what is the largest number so it's an integer right so integer is not having anything in between so one you'll directly jump to two and two you'll directly jump to three and three you'll directly jump to four you'll not take any number in between three and four the decimals the fractions they are not included in the integers so you have to consider two things two numbers they are one after the other and they are like they are not the fractions they are not the decimals they are just the complete numbers so so two consecutive are having the two consecutive integers are having the sum of nine so that means if if if, if there's one number of two and there's consecutive integer after this that'll be definitely two plus one that'll be three right because you're gonna add one and one and one you will get the consecutive integers one after the other so that means if we'll make a general form here if if because we don't know the consecutive integers so if one of the numbers is X right then the second number has to be like one unit one number greater than this so second has to be X plus one for example if the number is four then the second number has to be four plus one that's five right four plus one that's five so four after that is five so we in general what we wrote is x and x plus one and it's telling you the they have sum so sum means you have to add them right x plus x plus one is nine right they're having the sum is nine so we can write x plus x plus one is equal to nine or you can say x plus x is two x 2x plus 1 is equal to 9 subtracting 1 to both sides you'll get 2x is equal to 8 and then dividing by 2 to both sides you'll get x is equal to 4 but we don't have to cal we don't have to write 4 as the answer because it's telling you what is the larger number so the first number is x that is 4 the second number has to be x plus 1 that is 5 right 4 plus 1 that's 5 so the answer will not be 4 it will be 5 so that is the answer to this question now the second one how many different integers right so different integers satisfy the equation x square equals 9 so x square equals 9 how many different integers so so how many numbers can we plug in for x so that you will get 9 different values right so we obviously know that one number that's 3 squared is 9 right so one of the numbers is 3 for x we can plug in the value as 3 but you know that if any negative number if any negative number for example negative 2 if that is squared it will always become positive right 4 negative 4 you'll, you'll square it will be it will become 16 so if you are taking 3 as the number then you can take negative 3 also because negative 3 whole squared that will be positive negative 3 whole squared will be 9 again so you're having two numbers negative 3 and 3 so there are two different numbers you don't have to write 
option D as 3 but you have to see how many different integers so so there are two different integers whose square will give you the answer as 9 so that is uh, question number 2 uh, and uh, that's having the answer as option C now let us see question number 3 how many positive integers so positive integers so there are the integers which are negative low blow zero negative one negative two negative three and so on and there are positive integers which are you know to the right of zero one two three and so on so it's telling you how many positive integers less than hundred have the units digit of three okay so so we have to see positive integers less than hundred having a units digit of three so we can start from uh, you know from zero till hundred right we don't have to include 100, we don't have to include 0, we have to just move from 0 to 100 and see how many integers are having the units digit 3. So after 0, we'll be having 3 obviously, right? 3 and then uh, you'll be having 13, right? And then 23 and then t uh, 33, right? Because you have you you're interested in only units digit, right? Units digit, units digit, units digit. So you can be written it can be written as zero three one three two three 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 four three five three six three seven three eight three nine three. So that's it. Like there's there's no other number whose units digit has to be you know can be three except these numbers so we can just even you know um, calculate see how, see how many they are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so it's obvious it has to be ten because zero to ten there'll be one number and then ten to twenty there'll be another second and then twenty to twenty there'll be third so it'll be like that so there are ten numbers which are having units digit as 3. So option E is the right answer. Now let us see medium levels. If two consecutive prime numbers, so you're again having consecutive. Consecutive means one after the other, but they are now, they are now prime, right? So prime numbers start from 2, and 2 is the only even prime number. So 2, and then 3, and then 5, and then, right, and then 7, and so on those numbers are called prime numbers because they're they're not having the factor except their own number and one uh, so five is having a factor of five and one there's no other factor of five so these are called prime numbers so it's telling you two consecutive prime numbers have a sum of 60 what is the larger number so we have to check like how is this is gonna happen like they, they are seven and then um, you know you have to just work out few numbers then you'll be able to analyze the answer then you'll be having not 10 not 11 and then 13 not 14 not 15 not 16 not 7 17 then 19 and then 23 and then 26 27 28 29 29 so you should be a little more than 30 because the two numbers are having the sum of 60 so you have to be a little more than that 29 33 34 35 36 uh, 31 sorry 31 and then 37 37 right 37 now let us see is there any number which will work here 37 plus which number should be 60 37 obviously that number has to be you know having has to be a units digit having a 3 so that 7 plus 3 will be 10 and that'll be 0 there because 60 is having a 0 here so 37 is matching with 23 so let us see 37 23 7 8 9 10 3 4 5 6 yes 37 and 23 so the two numbers which are consecutive two prime numbers which are consecutive one after the other but it's telling you they should be one after the other they should not be having a gap of um, uh, two numbers right so you have to again uh, check for two consecutive prime numbers right 
29 and 31 what about this 29 and after that you're having 31 so 29 plus 31 because 9 plus 1 will be you know 10 so here 0 60 correct so 29 and 31 because they are consecutive they are one after the other if you'll not take the consecutive into consideration you will land into the wrong answer right you'll land into 37 that's the wrong answer so you have to you have to check what question is really asking me that's why I underline it consecutive prime numbers consecutive one after the other so after 29 there's 31 they are following the consecutiveness right so 29 and 31 and out of them the larger one is 31 so we'll plug in the value as 31 in the answer Now let us see question number 5. Two consecutive even integers have a sum of negative 26, which of the following must be true. So, first of all, consecutive and even and integers. There are, there are three conditions. The numbers should be consecutive, one after the other, but they should be even and they should be integers. So, so integers, even integers are like, are like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on and from the left side they are 0, negative 2, negative 4 and so on. So um, you'll be having the uh, you know uh, even integers from the right side of 0 also and from the left side also because it integers can be positive as well as negative so yes you, the question is that there are two consecutive even integers they're having the sum of negative 26 and you can check out neg the, the consecutive even integers are having a gap of 2 so 4 minus 2 is 2 6 minus 4 is 2 8 minus 6 is 2 and so on and ho here also negative 4 minus minus 2 is 2 right negative 2 and and so on so uh, what we can do is we can take one number as x and the other number as x plus 2 or x minus 2 depending on from which direction you will go you will get the right answer so x and x plus 2 will be the two numbers x plus x plus 2 has to be equal to negative 26 the question is asking you uh, is saying you that there are two numbers their sum is there are two consecutive even integers their sum is negative 26 so Obviously, they have to be negative, right? Because uh, when the, when you will add the consecutive even integers uh, who are having the sum as negative 26, then they have to be both uh, towards the left side of zero. Then only you can have their their sum as negative 26. So, so let us see which number what numbers they are. So x plus x plus two will be two x plus two equals negative 26. Subtracting two to both sides, you will get two x equals negative 28. So dividing by 2, x equals negative 14. So if x is negative 14, then, the una then another number, x plus 2, will be negative 14 plus 2, that is negative 12. So we are having two numbers as negative 14 and negative 12. So which of the following must be true? Well, 100%. Both numbers have to be negative. So this must be true. The second thing is the lesser number is negative 12, the lesser number is negative 14. Well, this is a weird thing here. The more left you will go to from the zero, the more lesser the number is. It seems to be bigger, right? Negative 14 is less than negative 12. Because the more negative it is, the less it is, right? So it is negative 14. Negative 14 is less than negative 12. So the lesser number is negative 14, not negative 12. So 1 and 3. So 1 and 3, option C is the right answer. Now let us see the sixth question. Uh, let S equal the set of all positive integers less than 12. So, so there's a set S and that includes all positive integers less than 12 positive and less than 12 so it'll start from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 because it is less than 12 how many members of s are not consecutive odd prime numbers okay so let us see how many are consecutive odd prime numbers for doing this question what you need to do is you need to use one you know uh, one criteria one condition and then move to the next condition and then move to the third condition let us start with the pr with, with the odd numbers 1 3 5 7 9 and 11 now out of these odd numbers how many are prime numbers 
3, 5, 7, and 11. So 3, 5, 7, and 11. And how did, out of these, we have done the or, or thing and we have done the prime thing. Now, how many of these are consecutive? Consecutive prime numbers, right? Consecutive. 3, 5, 7, and 11. They are all consecutive uh, prime numbers. Now the question is not that how many of them are consecutive or prime numbers. It's telling you how many of them are not. So out of these total, um, how many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Out of these 11 numbers, 4 are consecutive odd prime numbers so out of them uh, out of these 11 four are uh, four are having four are consecutive or prime numbers so how many are remaining so it'll be 11 minus 4 that is 7 7 and then these four 8 and 11 so you'll get a total of 11 so the answer will be 7 so very imp sorry here 7 so very important question this was because you were you know, uh, you might have got stuck in this um, vocabulary here, consecutive odd prime numbers. So what we can do here is we can just break it into few parts. We can just first simply write the odd numbers and then the prime numbers out of those odd numbers and then the consecutive prime numbers. So 3, 5, 7, 11 are consecutive prime numbers, which are odd. So they are 4. And out of 11, 4 are consecutive or prime numbers. So that means 7 are not consecutive executive or prime number so seven will be the answer now question number one a uh, few more um, uh, vocab terms factor here which of the following is a factor of 120 except so f factors of 120 you know the numbers which can divide 120 so three can divide it four can also divide it five can also divide it six can also divide it seven cannot so seven is the that factor which is uh, seven is not the factor of 120, right? Because telling which of the factor which of the following is a factor except so three is factor, four is factor, five is factor, six is factor, but seven is not. So that is the answer. Which of the following is an odd number that is factor 114? So which of the following is an odd number that is a factor of 114? So two is not an odd number. So we are interested in B, C, D, E. So it is. It has to be a fact. It has to be. Uh, it has to divide one one four. So one one four can be divisible by because the sum of these numbers is six. One plus one plus four. So that can be divided by uh, three. So let us see which number can have the addition of three. So let us see. F fifty seven is right. Fifty seven is. Fifty seven is five plus seven that is 12 so that is also divisible by 3 and this is also divisible by 3 maybe this might be the answer let us see 57 when you'll multiply it with 2 you will get 114 right so 57 is the right answer so here what I did I just used uh, the divisibility test of 3 because 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6. If 6 is divisible by 3, that means 114 is also divisible by 3. So I thought that if it is divisible by 3, then obviously those numbers which will divide it, they should also be divisible by 3. So I just used, because 2 was already you know eliminated because it's a, it's an even number it's not an odd number so 13 I used 1 plus 3 that is 4 4 is not divisible by 3 so 13 is not divisible by 3 55 5 plus 5 is 10 10 is not divisible by 3 that means 55 is not divisible by 3 57 5 plus 7 is 12 12 is divisible by 3 that means 57 can be 57 will be divisible by 3 but can that can divide 114 and 61 is 6 plus 1, that's 7. 7 is not divisible by 3, so 61 is also, you know, outruled. So we only got 57, and then we thought, let us move to uh, one more step and see whether 57 is a factor of 114 or not. So 114 divided by 57 is 2, so that is. So 57 is the right answer. Let's move to the next question. How many integer factors does the number 48 have? So, well, a factor will be an integer, right? So, just making you confused. So, we'll just go with the integers. We'll go with the factors, 48. 
that can be divided by 1 starting from 1 right and this can be divided by 2 this can be divided by 3 maybe no 8 9 10 11, 12 yes it can be divided by 3 also because divisible test we can check 8 plus 4 is 12 so 12 is divisible by 3 that means 48 is also divisible by 3 so let us take it 4 48 divisible by 4 not 5 and 6 also uh, not 7 8 times 5 is 40 8 times 6 is 48 right so 8 and then 9 no 10 no 11 no 12 12 24 36 48 right so 12 so and then uh, and then and then 24 24 and then 48 right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 well one thing one number is missing so uh, tw 8 9 10 11 12 which number is missing? Says nine times five is thirty-five. Nine times six is fifty-four. No, this is not. Uh, forty-eight. That means you don't need to take the number itself. You don't need to take the number forty-eight. Uh, as a factor also that means you will take only eight numbers right one two because otherwise they would have been option nine also if uh, they would have taken all the numbers but they have not taken 48 as their as a factor so so we have we're left with eight numbers and that's option D now let us move to question number four medium level if P is the set of all different, okay, so they are different numbers and they are real numbers and they are prime factors of 48 that are also factors of 100. How many members does the P contain? So, well, we have already written the factors of 48, right? They are different also and they are real and they, they we have to select only prime numbers. So, 2, 3, that's it, 2, 3 are the only prime numbers in this uh, fact factors of 48 that are also factors of 100 so out of 2 and 3 which is a factor of 100 only 2 because 3 is not dividing 100 so only 2 how many how many members of set P contain only one number that is 2 so only one number not 2 you'll not take the answer 2 because it's telling you how many members it's not telling you what is the answer right so how many members it's only one member and that's 2 which is fulfilling the criteria that it is also a factor of 100 so there are only one one member so there's only one member and that's option B now let's move to the next question what is the lowest number that is multiple of 10 12 and 15 so lowest number multiple of 10 12 and 15 will take the lowest common multiple so we'll take it as uh, we can just do 10 table of 10 right 10 20 30 40 50 60 and then we can take 12 24 36 48 60 we can take 15 30 and 45 and 60 so which number is coming in all the three and which is the lowest let's try 30 30 but it's not coming in the table of 12 30 30 here but not in the 12 so we cannot take 30 40 we cannot take it's not coming in the next two 50 we cannot take 60 60 60 so the no lowest number that is multiple of 10 12 and 15 is 60 now option now question number six if a b c are different prime numbers how many factors does a b square c have well a, B, and C are different prime numbers. Let us take the smallest prime numbers 2, 3, and 5. 2, 3, and 5. How many factors does A, B square C? So we have to calculate A, B square C. So that means A is 2 times B square is 3 square times C is 5. So you'll get it as 2 times 3 square is 9 times 5. So 2 times 9 is 18. 18 times 5 is 90. How many factors does a b? How many factors does 90 have? 
So we have to calculate the factors of 90. So we can start from 1, 2, 3, not 4, 5, 6, right? Yeah, 6, it's not 7, not 8, 9, then 10, not 11, 12, no 12, 13, 14, 15, right? And then you can shift to thir 30, and then s not 60, 30, and then 45. 45 times 2 is 90, and then 90. So these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Again, they have not taken 90 into consideration, so we'll take 10. That's option D. So how many factors does A, B, square, C have? 10 factors. So that is the answer to question number 6. And this was about math vocabulary. Different vocabulary terms. First of all, what you will do? You will underline the uh, new vocab multiple different prime numbers factors so that it'll be easier for you to understand what really we have to do so this was all about SAT skill number eight and in the next video we'll do SAT skill number nine